Ataku. Ataku. Jo. Guides coming in! Hawkeye is tame Delaware. The Colonel's pets. At ease, Sergeant. Beg the report, sir. Skites coming in. Have them report to me. Here. Which party was out, Major Haywood? Hawkeye and his Delaware, sir. From Gatchcook and his son, Ancus. Oh, best of a shifty lot. In fact, for Indians, none better. Hawkeye and the Delawares to the port, sir. All right, Sergeant. Come along, Hawkeye. Mustn't keep you from your breakfast. What have you to report? Nothing, Colonel. There ain't nothing stirring between the fort and the lake. Nothing you want to shoot at, except for the pot. What did you see, Hawkeye? And nothing, Major. That's hardly the kind of report one expects. Give details, if you please. Major, I don't aim to describe what I didn't see. Chingachgook, tell the Major what you see. I have seen the great water. I have seen tall trees. Uncas, what have you heard? I've heard the wind. I've heard the calling of the birds. Major Hawkeye is pulling your leg. It's a habit they have in the northeastern provinces. Indeed, sir. All right, Hawkeye, get your Indians fed. Thank you, Colonel. I'll get my own head into the nose bag, too. Sir, you encourage them in familiarity. You have tried discouragement often enough and with what results. Major, you had the good fortune to be born of a Scottish father, but the misfortune to have lived among slaves. Hawkeye treats me as any Scottish ploughman would, or indeed as I would any Scottish marquis. I've been denied your privileges, sir. Yes, you have. By God, I wish I had them now. Forty years in the service, and not even five spent in Scotland. Major, I hardly know my daughters. While I stand here in Fort William Henry, they grow to marriageable age without me. This American campaign will soon be over, sir. We'll drive Montcalm and his Indian allies back into Canada. General Montcalm may have other ideas. You'll never come down this far. He risks too much. Possibly. Then why should not your daughters come to New York or Albany, sir? They'd be safe there. The Eastern provinces are full of senior officers' wives. Oh, my daughters have pressed for the privilege often enough. My elder daughter, Cora, in every letter. Alice is too shy to be importunate. Let them come, sir. Oh, if only I could go home. The real war is in Europe, not in this American wilderness. Yes, sir. Might even give me a month in it. Oh, here I am and here I stay, growing old among savages. Well, if Mohammed cannot go to the mountain. My indomitable Cora would not care to be called a mountain, Major Hayward. Out of time. Not at all, Mr. Grant. I uh, tire you, perhaps. Not at all. You seem a little melancholy. I suppose it is rather a sad occasion, troops leaving their home barracks for service overseas. Quite. But not for me, as I shall be seeing you before long in the Americas. And Miss Alice, of course. Of course. <laughs> Ah, 
Under these circumstances, I refuse to be sad. The circumstances, Mr. Grant, are not to everyone's taste. You may see my father before I do. The delay will not be unconscionable, Miss Monroe. But while you go in a ship, my sister and I must wait for a merchant ship. It's another time, another tide. I really cannot see why we should not sail in the same ship. It will be quite delightful, but impossible, Miss Monroe. No lady could countenance the amenities of a trip ship. This lady would countenance anything to see her father again. Really, Miss Monroe, the men. You have seen them. You might even have heard them with their foul-mouthed oaths. A soldier's daughter is less nice in these matters than you suppose. Really, Miss Monroe, it would never do. Mr. Grant, I really think I am a little fatigued. Of course. I understand. May I? Dear, you look a little flushed. I'm perfectly happy, Cora. But it is something of a strain. In conversation, young men are so very persistent. One must always respond suitably to compliments. And I'm not very good at it. Alice, I wish that we were away too in the morning. I would exchange all the young men in Scotland for one word with Father. So would I. You don't really want to go, Alice. I would prefer to have Father come home to Scotland. Poor Mr. Grant is put out of countenance. Mr. Grant is being very foolish. You think he stands no chance with Cora? He'd be a fool if he had a chance and took it. Oh, surely not. He has very little of his own. But Colonel Monroe's estate is not inconsiderable. Cora's inheritance might very well embarrass any husband. I'm not sure that I understand you. Her colour is striking, is it not? A more observant young man than Mr. Grant. Ah, fools apart, there is no young man in the Western Hemisphere who is a fit mate for Cora Monroe. Of course, in the Americas. But that's a horse of another colour. Colour? You surely do not suggest... Mm -hmm. Her maternal grandmother was half Negro. Mercy me! Colonel Monroe married the descendant of a slave, a Negro slave. Wittingly? Uh-huh, he knew. Foreign service in the tropics dulls the finer senses you can. Poor Cora's mother died when she was born. And when Mr. Monroe came home, he married a Scotch gentlewoman, Alice's mother. I always understood that Cora was the Colonel's favorite daughter. Mm-hmm. Mr. Grant's favorite, too. Ah, men are besotted creatures. Uh, Miss Monroe. Yes, Mr. Grant. Uh, Miss Monroe, it occurs to me that I may not have the privilege of meeting your father before you and Miss Alice arrive. Indeed, Mr. Grant. Uh, Colonel Monroe commands Fort William Henry. It's an outpost, Miss Monroe. I wasn't aware of that, Mr. Grant. I am to report to General Webb's headquarters, that at Fort Edwards. Yes, I was aware of that, too. <laughs> what I wish to say is that I may be stationed at Fort Edwards. I see. Thank you, Mr. Grant. You're very kind, Mr. Grant. It is even possible that we may meet at Fort Edward. Then we look forward to seeing you there. Thank you, Miss Alice. Uh, but General Webb will never allow ladies to go further into the wilderness to your father's command at Fort William Henry. I'm obliged to you for the information, Mr. Grant. Not at all, Miss Monroe. I have not yet had the privilege of meeting General Webb, nor has he met me. Ah, you would mire my beast friend. Oh, yes. Mire it. This is no homebred nag. Oh, no. This Don't. steed hails from foreign parts, from the little island itself across the blue water. <laughs> like hell. Ah, I can speak of these things without bragging, sir. For I have been to old England. <clears throat> I have seen the brigantines leave Thames with their cargoes of stallions for the Indies. Many fine and noble beasts there were too, but never a one that verifies the true scripture horse as this one does. He poureth in the valley, he rejoiceth in his strength, he goeth out to meet the armed men. Yes, my friends, in this beast we see the true stock of the horse of Israel descended to our own time. 
He saith, among the trumpets, he smelleth the battle far off. You wish to refresh your spirit in psalmody, my friend? Mm -hmm. Very well, yeah, so be it. Let us raise our voices in thanksgiving. <coughs> Me, no change of times shall ever shock my firm Bring him in here. You know my feelings about drunkenness amongst the Indians? Yes, General Webb, sir. Did he do any damage? He was running amok, trying to assault one of the women. White woman, sir. Where did he get the drink? I don't know, sir. But you are making inquiries. I will look into it, sir. Mind you, look in the right place. I mean, when I say, Sergeant, I won't have these savages getting so much as a smell of that stuff. I hold you responsible, is that clear? Yes, sir. 250 lashes. Make sure the rest of his tribe see it's done. Very good. Outside! Hurry, Joe! Hold him, hold him, damn you! He's earned himself a bonus. 250 lashes at sunset, and repeat that dose in the morning. Yes, sir. Now get him out of here! Come on! What's he done, Magua? White soldier gave him fire water for company of squaw. He knows the rules. White men have no rules. The soldier will be punished. Soldier! What's your assessment of the situation at Fort William Henry, Haywood? Mine, sir. You have commanded reconnaissance parties in and around the lake, if you don't? Yes, sir. Naturally, I'd report to Colonel Munro. Naturally. But even the most junior major can have an opinion. He would... An officer commanding a fort has a very heavy responsibility. Yes, sir. Therefore, his reports tend to be overcautious, pessimistic. Now, a sanguine young officer experienced in the field may hold a very different opinion. He would... Have you seen any troop movement or Indian movement in the vicinity of Fort William Henry or Lake Champlain of an aggressive nature? No, sir. Do you, from your observations in the field, believe that Montcalm intends to advance from Canada and strike at the Hudson Fort? Well, answer, man! No, sir. I presume Colonel Munro has intelligence of another sort. You presume? It says nothing to me of any such intelligence. Colonel Munro is merely unhappy with the situation. Well, I suppose no soldier's entirely happy with the situation he finds himself in. Unless he'd be at home in his bed in England. No, oh, Haywood. I see no reason to deploy my army to no purpose, and for no better reason than Colonel Munro's state of mind. Come in. Well? Sir. Two young ladies reported at the gate, sir. Young ladies? Yes, sir. The Mrs. Munro, sir. Daughters of Colonel Munro. Good God! Sir, they are expected, but not here or at Fort William Henry. They were to be the governor's guests at New York. Young ladies here? At the gate, sir. The devil did they get here? Up the Hudson, sir. Oh, really? Hey, well, this is intolerable. Where the devil do they think they are, Tunbridge Wells? Edinburgh, I presume, sir. Shall I attend them, sir? Do its proper, Dammy. And take that idiot with you. <laughs> Miss Munro? Yes, I'm Miss Munro. I am Major Hayward, stationed with your father at Fort William Henry. How do you do, Major Hayward? May I present my sister, Miss Alice Munro? How do you do, Major Hayward? How do you do, Miss Alice? May I welcome you to Fort Edward on behalf of General Webb? Thank you, Major. 
Do you not welcome us on behalf of our father, too? <laughs> He'll do that for himself at Fort William Henry. Here, General Webb waits to greet you. By floods of wicked men distressed. By floods of wicked men distressed. No father could fail to welcome such a daughter. Such daughters. But would it not have been wiser to have waited? The ship which could have brought my letter brought us, General. Yes, but once ashore at New York. The letter would have come up the Hudson no faster than we did. But you could have written and waited. The governor of New York would have been enchanted with your company. But my father would not. Hmm. General Webb, I begin to feel unwelcome. Miss Munro, God forbid! Faces from home, and such charming faces. As I observe, Major Haywood already appreciates. I did not expect to hear sounds of home, Major. Sounds of home, Mr. Alice? The Psalms. <laughs> Forgive me. My home is in this continent, but far to the south. The south? Virginia. My father settled there. Oh, he came from Scotland. Indeed, he served for a time in the same regiment as Colonel Munro. They were very close friends. Is that so? And is the Royal Regiment much given to psalm singing, Major? As a general rule, no. We have a travelling psalmist in the fort, a strange antique fellow, a natural eccentric, which is not without advantages in this wilderness. Indeed. The Indians fear and respect any form of madness. Must one then be mad to be safe from the savages, Major? They frighten me. The Indians in this fort are friendly Indians. They are the Delawares. The Delawares? Long ago conquered. They're neutral. They do not fight. Then one must only fear those savages who fight for the French. The Hurons, General Montcalm's allies. We all fear them, Miss Alice. And will Montcalm bring them south out of Canada? We have no reason to suppose he will do so. But one must take precautions, of course. And that is why my father commands at Fort William Henry. Yes. He holds that end of the portage from Lake Champlain to the Hudson. At the river end stands this fort and General Webb's army. And when will my sister and I be able to go to Fort William Henry? Miss Munro, out of the question. You must spend the night here. But it is not yet noon. Fort William Henry is a day's march by the wagon road, rather further by the back rail. We are to go by the back trail. Oh, yes. May I ask why? <laughs> well, it is less dangerous. Are we to be in danger, then? Miss Munro, you are in the theatre of war. But I thought that we were winning the war. The French are in Canada, are they not? Their armies lie just across the border. I see. And where they may launch a counter-attack. Yes, it is always possible. But surely, if it was their intention to do so within the next 24 hours, your intelligence would have told you. Miss Munro, where there is a tree, there may be Indian behind it, and a damned unfriendly... I beg your pardon, ma'am. A soldier's language. I'm a soldier's daughter, General. Then you'll know how to accept an order. You and your sister will ride to Fort William Henry tomorrow. In the meantime, an Indian runner will carry a dispatch to the Colonel. On this occasion, at least, my word will bring a smile to your father's lips. This was the country of my people. I know it was, Chingachgook. But your fathers took it the same way mine did. Same as the white man. Your fathers came from the setting sun across the big river. They fought the people of this country and drove them into the forest. My fathers came from the red sky of the morning over the Great Salt Lake and took the land from yours in the same fashion. My fathers fought the naked red man. Is there no difference, Hawkeye, between the arrow of the warrior and the bullet with which you kill? I'm no scholar, Chingachgook. But from what I've seen at deer chases, I'd say that a hickory bow in the hands of your father's was more dangerous than a rifle in the hands of mine. You have the story told by your fathers. What say your old men? Do they tell the young pale faces that they fought with the wooden gun against the red man armed only with the stone hatchet? It's not the custom of our old men to tell in their villages what they've seen and done. They do not speak before the other warriors. No, it, it's written. 
in books. I know it's not a wise custom, though it is of my father's. A man should tell with his tongue what he's seen and done. His face will then show the truth of his words, that he's no cowardly boaster. Riding's wrong, too, in other ways. Some men are too busy doing a man's work to learn the names of the marks. You do not know the deeds of your fathers, Hokai? No, Uncas. One thing I do know, all the bumpos could shoot. For I've got a natural turn with a rifle that must have been handed down from generation to generation. As it says in the Holy Bible, all good and evil gifts are bestowed. The ways and thoughts of the white men are strange. I don't agree with all the ways of my people, even though I'm white. But for all that our skins are of different hues, we are friends, Chingachgook. Are we not? Hawkeye is a man, the friend of Chingachgook. Good morning, Sergeant. Morning, sir. You wish to see me, sir? Yes. I've been detailed to take charge. Stand easy, Sergeant. I'm in charge of the execution party this morning. Captain Hackett did inform me, sir. I gather you'll be there. NCO in charge, sir. Sergeant, I've never done this duty before. I'd be grateful if you would see that everything goes off smoothly. Don't you worry about that, sir. It's the same as everything else when you get used to it. There's nothing to it, really. Just been to see the condemned men. They'd appreciate that, sir. Yes, I believe they did. The young one, at least. He gave me a letter to give to his wife. Uh, I wouldn't waste too much sympathy on him, sir. He knew the penalty for desertion, if I may make an opinion, sir. Yes, of course, Sergeant. You're absolutely right. Do we have many desertions? None again, sir. Most of the men have too much sense to try it. So God knows of enough reason to cooped up in this ruddy ark. Yes, I know what you mean. Oh, it's not only the fort, sir. The cannons were dredged up from the bottom of the lake. They've been there since the damn country was discovered. 